peace. This is Jason, and welcome to uh, a special edition of my podcast, Happy, Healthy, and Whole, a podcast dedicated to empowered living. So in this episode, which is completely unplanned, um, it's just something that I really feel share a little light on and some of my personal experience, and it has everything to do with this, you know, holiday season. Um, and, you know, I reside in the U.S., so, you know, this is the time. Uh, it really started with actually Halloween, you know, but this is the time in our country for those who are listening internationally could have a global audience. You know, this is the time when, you know, we're around our family a lot more. We're very festive. You know, what we would call the last quarter of the year um, can be a challenging time uh, for many people. And it absolutely, you know, unequivocally is for me. You know, I just know from life experience, you know, being here 50 years on the planet, um, I had had the privilege of actually, you know, serving in the U.S. military. And I really saw for the first time, I was surrounded around a lot of people. I was an aircraft carrier. When we were out to sea, we had 5,000 folks there, you know, men and women but that was so, it was a saturated environment for me, which is something I wasn't used to, you know, being raised by a single mother, the mo- most of the time it was just my brother, my mother and myself, you know, no other family members really ever in our life. So being in the military, I saw, you know, a lot of the dysfunction, you know, with the other guys who really struggled around the holidays. And it's very interesting, like when you're in dysfunction, you you tell yourself or your mind, your unconscious mind tells you that this is normal. And when you're in a silo, you know, like I was in my case, and apparently for the other guys there too, like when you're in your silo, you think that that behavior is okay. And it's only until you are placed into a different environment, a more diverse, expansive environment, you know, that you realize that what you have been dealing with most of your life is very toxic and unhealthy. So that was my first glimpse, you know, and then I got discharged and I worked in the medical profession. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, I worked as a certified nursing assistant. I was a phlebotomist. I worked on a surgical floor. Um, I've held space for a lot of people who have transitioned. And I also worked in a primary physician's office for about six years. So I have a lot of firsthand knowledge um, based on experience around what happens to people just in the holidays uh, as a former medical professional. Full moons is another one. People really, you know, bug out on the full moon. So you see during full moons and you see during the holiday seasons, like a spike in ER, specifically around suicides, overdoses, things like that, where people, even if they're not serious about really taking their life, they're so desperate, they don't want to be alone, right? So then sometimes they get admitted, like the hospital I used to work at, they had their own floor, and it was kind of like a little psych war, you know, transitional before they decided what was going on with you and where you needed to go, what other services you needed, but that was like um, like a temporary spot. Yeah, some people would just hurt themselves so that they could be admitted to that place, so they weren't alone. Or they were at least with other people who felt similarly to them. So I just know that I'm not alone. I know that a lot of people deal with this. For anyone who has had a wonderful experience with holidays and it's always been very festive and uh, there's no trauma around it for you, like, listen, I am so thrilled in my heart for you to never have to deal with this. I'm sure you're dealing with something else, but I'm really glad you don't have to deal with this. So, you know, this may not resonate or make any sense to anyone who has not had trauma, you know, and has not been surrounded with a lot of dysfunction. So I'm just going to make that as a caveat. God bless you. You must have really sown some powerful karma in your last life. Um, and I could not be more thrilled for you. But again, this episode, this special little clip here is for um, those of you on the other side of that spectrum, you know? So if the happy happy side would be the light, (laughs) then this would definitely be the shadow piece. So I'm talking with all my other shadows that are um, trying to navigate 
this dark time, you know? And it's like, again, from like Halloween to not New Year so much, but Christmas, you know? You know, they say like when you get glaucoma, what happens is like, it's like, like a vignette, like for those who do, you know, Instagram and stuff, you put, and you have these different options. Well, the vignette option puts that little black, you know, edging around it. And then like you can go into the settings and control that and make it bigger. And, you know, so they say glaucoma is like that too. Like it does that same vignette thing to your vision. So I wanted to just use that as like an example of what I'm talking about. Like, so from October, um, Halloween to Christmas, it's like it gets darker and darker and darker the closer that we get to Christmas. Like as, you know, like that glaucoma thing, you just kind of encamp around us and get closer and closer and narrow down and narrow down. And then like for some of us, it gets all the way pitch black dark. We're here now. This is I'm recording this in my bedroom. <laughs> Um, because my recording studio, I just wanted to have a little bit more of an intimate conversation and, you know, I'm, so I'm recording in my bedroom. This is totally unscripted. It's extemporaneous. I'm speaking and recording and whatever lands is supposed to land. Right. Uh, but I'm starting to feel it, man. Here's the other thing, you know, this work that I talk about, like it never ends. Like, I mean that there's this you know, awareness that comes to our wounds and traumas, the things that we need to heal to the point where we can articulate it with our friends over tea. And then there's another part that's deeper than that. You actually really start doing the work. And then there's another part deeper than that, um, which is what I call like um, acceptance, acceptance of this being what it needs to be. I paint that picture because I'm going to kind of talk in, the, in those same terms. So I'm going to talk about um, what used to happen, like what, where it all started from, you know, and then I'm going to talk about some things that I tried to do. Um, and then I'm going to talk about where I'm at today. Okay. And again, you know, the hope is that this may serve someone that that's in the same place. If you've again, listened to this podcast in the past, thank you so much for the support. If this is your first time listening, I really appreciate you being here. We have more work to do, so there'll be more episodes. So those people know, already know that I was raised was by a single mother and um, is very abusive. And in fact, I developed PTSD in my early childhood. Um, unlike most people who get it after they, you know, they have been in the military, I actually went into the mil military with PTSD and have done extensive work since then to heal it and eradicate it from my life. So that's what the basis of this podcast is all about. And of course, we're going to be talking about other things, right? For me, I had an early, early uh, traumatic experience. I want to think I was five or six. I could not have been older than six, that's for sure. And it was around Christmas and it was with my mother. And it was very, very, tra it was a very traumatic experience for me where I was cast aside. Um, all the gifts that I had, I received, uh, she picked them up and literally walked them out and threw them all into the dumpster. And, you know, I was sent into the room in isolation, you know, through the walls of our one bedroom apartment. I can hear all the festivities going on out there without me. And it really felt like she felt like um, they couldn't go on unless I was out of the way. So a lot of my experience with my mother was, a, was like that. And again, I'll be sharing a lot more about that as uh, we do more episodes. So that was my first traumatic experience. It was really interesting because later that night after like everything died down, my mother gave me the gifts back. She woke me up at like midnight or something because I cried myself to sleep, you know? And, and we slept in a one bedroom apartment. So she had a bed and like my brother and I, like I guess there were two, I guess there were like full mattresses. You don't really see those any, you know, much anymore, but there were like two full mattresses in one bedroom. So my brother and I like slept together like for a long time. And then she was always right there. So my brother was already asleep in the bed. I was asleep. Uh, and then she had come into the room. She used to like watch Western. So she put on the uh, TV was on, just, you know, a dark room backlit by the television light. And she comes and she wakes me up and she kind of gives me the gifts back, you know, and I get to go on the floor down there and, and the, just with the benefit of the TV light. And I got to play with the little things and the trauma was already done at that point. And, you know, another really traumatic experience was for me, a uh, 4th of July experience, I'm not going to go into all of it, but it was very similar in nature where I was left alone, why my mother and my brother and, uh, you know, other people were, were having a good time without me. 
So like that's the first stage I'm talking about where I can articulate to you as if we were having tea and I hope I'm drinking a little bit of coffee, but maybe you're drinking something and we're, we're sharing this time together energetically, you know? So that's that first stage that I would be able to share with you. You know, I can put some language around what those traumas were for me. The second stage is where I want to talk about next. So, you know, I get out of the military. Uh, I start a young family. And for those who do not know, I was married for 11 years. I have two beautiful children, a boy and a girl. So one of the stories unconsciously that I told myself as I was erecting this cute little black family that looked like the Cosbys, um, because that was really my only positive example of what uh, a black healthy family would look like and feel like, was that TV show. And probably a lot of you can relate to that if you're um, you know, a little older in age. So I had unconsciously told myself a story that I was going to create a complete counter opposite narrative to the one that I had experienced so that my kids would never know what that felt like. Right. So then you get into these, you get into these behaviors and it's all good intended where you're trying to act like nothing's wrong. This is, you know, a healthy holiday is totally normal and you're laughing and you're kicking with the kids and they have no idea that you don't have any sense of what the hell you're doing um, or why you're doing it because it's not real. And, you know, you go through that over the course of the years and, you know, it, at best it feels like your feet, your shoes are on the wrong feet. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense, but you, you know, you, you definitely know what you went through is something you're not trying to repeat. Um, so, you know, we, we overshoot and go way on the other, other side of that spectrum. At least that's what I did. And um, never really made sense. Never felt. You know, always wanted to run, run into the bathroom and hide, you know, like you didn't want to even do it in, in the first place. Just felt weird. Um, and then you start to ask questions like, like, what is that? Like, what is this about? You know, so after the dissolve of my marriage, you know, um, and I'm out here, I'm single, I'm in my uh, mid 30s at that point. I eventually, you know, I started seeing someone and loved the holidays I couldn't relate, um, but I really couldn't speak about why then. I wasn't really tapped in like I am today, and like I, I didn't know how to be vulnerable. I didn't know how to like be transparent and, you know, and share my truth. I just didn't, I didn't, I had to learn how to do that, um, but I didn't know it then. So, you know, that didn't go so well. It got really, you know, got a, a bit messy during those times where I was kind of shutting down and they just didn't understand what was happening. Uh, not because of that, but that was just an element of that, that relationship. And it, so it ended. And, you know, I had a couple, you know, a couple relationships after that. And it was kind of this, this theme, like everybody that was in my life was really jazzed up about the holidays, you know, and I just never, never felt that way. Um... So up until this last relationship that I was in, which was six and a half years ago, I've been single and abstinent since, the, um, since ending that connection. But in that last one for sure, man, I went all in. Like I really tried, you know? Um, you know, she just really loved the holidays, man. I really tried. I said, you know, because at this point, I'm like, I got to heal this. Like I, I have, I had gotten to the point of my awareness that I, uh, it was good to be able to know like when it happened, but it was even better to do your best to take action. So th that was the relationship where I was really deliberate to, to really attack this, right? Because I, I wanted to be free of it. And at the time, so tired of being the outlier, you know, in this and not having people under to understand and moreover, me not even being willing to talk about it, you know, because I wasn't open to talk about it. Yeah, it's kind of like vertigo, like you just don't have your balance, you don't have your sense of self. Um, so it's really hard to share it. But this last connection, I was like, I'm, I'm going to, I can, I can heal this thing, right? You know, she just like over the top, like childlike, and which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all wrong with that. You know, in fact, if, if I didn't have the wounds that I had, that, could have been a really healing time for us. So I really tried and it went horribly bad. And um, so like, you know, I, I, I kind of begin to tell her like, look, this is what's in my jacket. This is what I got. And she's like, okay, well let's, let's, you know, she was down to try to like reverse it with me. And, um, you know, she just goes full in and I'm trying to go like 
she takes a big leap in, right? And I and I take, I, I'm trying to do the full leap with her. Like I, my legs are stronger, I'm stronger, but for whatever the reason, I I I could I maybe reached the middle. Like she jumped all the way. So that's how, uh, uh, just as a visual, how far apart we were. Even though I was trying everything I could, you know, to keep up with her, I just couldn't. And, you know, I still w- really wasn't in a place to put good language around it and sit her down and say, listen, I'm, I, I never told her I was struggling. See, that was the thing. Like, I didn't even communicate to her that I was struggling. I just acted like I wasn't. Which felt even more weird. <laughs> so, you know, the holiday comes and she's all in her kitty mode. Boom, boom, boom. And, you know, she, she wants to, you know, do all this stuff. Like, watch these TV shows. And... I just feel like that glaucoma thing happening, you know, and I'm just shutting down and I'm shutting down and, and I could feel it, man. I could feel all in my body. And, um, you know, I was doing, I was trying to override it, which means I was, I was, um, choosing to not like see myself and hear myself, you know, um, which I think is one of the primary reasons why I have experienced suffering in life, and I, I believe that's a lot of the other reasons why other people do too. Um, so I, instead of you know saying being able to articulate that, um, didn't, you know, and I didn't manage it well. So as the day goes on, somehow I get triggered by something it, because it was me, it's my stuff. I got triggered, and um, it triggered her. And then, of course, now we, we we create this loop where we're just triggering each other. And it's like we go from a one <laughs> to a two to a three, like to ten real quick. And, you know, she's fiery. She's an Aries. You know, I'm fiery. I'm a Leo. And, um, you know, I got that Scorpio and moon. And, you know, so we we were we were just a cocktail anyway. <laughs> so that's way I can say that. So we start firing off on one another to the point where, um it got physical. I literally shut down, guys. Like, eyes glazed over, just like stone at one point. Because she's yelling and she's, you know, doing her Italian thing. And um, it just it definitely triggered me. Took me right back to my mother. And I just, boom, like stone. And she had never seen that, you know. But, I mean, a full boom. The, the city has just shut down. That triggered her even more because it got to the point where she could get no rise out of me. I mean, she was cursing at me. She said very, you know, hurtful things. And, you know, and that was one sided, you know, like, but she got physical with me. She had, she couldn't reach me. You know what I'm saying? I was that far in the vault. And that was just, boom, that was, you know, the relationship technically was over before that, you know, but that definitely was like the end piece. And then, you know, for those who have listened to my unconscious coupling, like that's the, that's the same individual. And, um, you know, and then there's a part, part two to that, you know, where I talk about why it was such a, you know, healing relationship for me, even though it didn't, it didn't, you know, last. And X, Y, Z. It was definitely time for, to me, for me to get out of that. And so I did. So that's that second stage that I talked about. And then third stage is where I've had to, um, finally land and I'm glad that I did and that's uh, with acceptance so as this Thanksgiving holiday is happening right now of course I try my best to sleep with my phone off whenever I can so last night I, I had the privilege of doing that and um, so when I woke up I had messages ding 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 happy Thanksgiving boom boom boom, boom. you know um, a lot a lot of people who don't know like the deep backstory um, so like it doesn't offend me like I know that it's their innocence and their joy, and I'm glad that they feel that they want to send a blessing my way so, like, I don't get my feelings about it or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's par for the course on a holiday. Um, so it's, it's not a thing. I don't make it a thing. You know, you start seeing more holiday advertisements, you know, so you know, like, you know, if you're a person like me and it goes, okay, I don't really rock with these holidays. And I would love to be able to say that it's because I'm a Rastafarian and all this and spiritual. So it's not. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that's convenient. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's it's convenient because I'm already like conditioned not to rock with holidays anyway. That as a Rasta man, I can be like, yeah, I don't do this Western holiday stuff. But the deeper truth is 
it's got nothing to do with my spirituality and my belief systems around like the creator and stuff. It's because of the trauma, man, you know? And so like, I want to be real about that, you know? But for anyone else who's like starting to feel like that dark circle, <laughs> that vignette coming around, like, oh, here we go again. And I'm like be on social media and see all these happy people and that it's just not me. I cannot relate. I don't want to see it. I want to deal with it. You know, boom, boom, boom. Like, and it, it, you know, like, you know that you're getting ready to go into this, this, this stage. If you're practicing self-awareness like me, then you start asking yourself like, okay, well, how am I going? What are the things that have worked for me in the past? How do I want to navigate this period? You know, cause you're not, even though you did it last year, you're not that same being anymore. You know, if you're evolving and doing your work, you should be different. So every year you got to kind of sit down in um like it's the Pentagon, you're in the war room trying to figure out how you're going to like go through this with like compassion and grace. And what are the ways you can heal? You know, what are the opportunities for you to heal? So you had that conversation because you've accepted that this is just how things things with you are. I cannot tell you how peaceful I feel probably for the very first time, you know, that I'm like, this is just it. Not like it, this is, you know, it is what it is. Because sometimes people use it as an excuse not to grow, like it's a crutch. And so that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that part of my divine assignment might mean that holidays or just having that, you know, that whole festive element is not what I signed up for in this life. You know, maybe it's just nothing more than that. And that had to express, express itself in ways that were traumatic. But at the end of the day, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm working with. You know what I'm saying? And I'm at peace about it to the point where I have finally in my life, I don't have to fake the funk. I don't have to play like I want to play holiday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can be just like, now nah, I'm going to sit this one out and, and just let that be that. And the people, the people that are closest to me, like my brother, my son, my daughter, like they already know that, you know, Pop ain't the one to really rock with these holidays. So, you know, there's less pressure coming from that side. And and for me, that's generally, you know, where it's, you know, I feel like it's come from, like from the, on the family, you know, tip. But um, but not anymore, you know, not anymore. I've gotten to the place where I'm like, nah, this is just something I don't, I don't do. I don't want to do this. And um, it's nothing wrong with me. It's nothing wrong with anybody who wants to do it. There's zero judgments. Like, go have your fun. Like, you know, life is really stressful. So if you can find ways to have fun, and if you have a healthy family dynamic where y'all can sit around the table and have a good time and you love that, then yeah, man, good for you. Like, bravo. For other people who may be at a different stage than where I'm at, which is full acceptance, you know, and... And, and, and I don't want I don't want to try to heal it. I'm going to speak for me in my life for my bettering, my perfecting. Like, I really like who I am, you know, and I really like, you know, who I want to become, you know. So I don't have like a victim mentality around this at all. I'm free. I'm free. You know, and um, I'm not in a partnership right now. And one day I will be. And. You know, the queen and I will have a conversation around that. And we'll we'll have to figure out what we're going to do because she may be on the other side of that. You know, she may want to go all out. You know, we'll figure out what we're going to do then. Up until then, like my I'm OK. You know what I'm saying? I'm accepting that this is a part of my integration. This is a part of what I signed up to do on a soul cosmic level. And so I don't believe I'm a victim in any way. And, you know, maybe this will serve someone who's at one of those other stages. Um, or reaffirm for anyone who's like me, just like, this is just what it is. It's okay. Everything is fine, man. You know, it's perfect. And if you're, you know, in any one of those other stages and you, you know, you resonate with the fact that, yo, man, I'm feeling like my shoes are on the wrong feet right now, then, uh, maybe this will give you a little bit of like relief and not like a misery loves company. Cause I don't get with that vibration, but I mean, just a little relief that maybe you don't have to try so hard after all. And maybe you could just, you know, give yourself permission um, to em embrace who you are, you know. And when you do it well, it won't make anyone else who's different than you feel any way at all. They should feel neutral. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if somebody at work or someone you interface with and they all charge up around the holidays, you ain't got to be the, the Grinch in the room, you know. And I think that's when... You really have embraced something and you're just like, yeah, this is just my truth right now. This is my truth in this life. 
and I'm comfortable with it and I'm, I'm extremely comfortable being around people who have a different experience than me and I don't need to bug out and, you know, and I don't need to change who I am. You know, maybe to give you permission to, to, to know that that's an option. Because honestly, I didn't even feel like I, I had that option. I just felt like it, it was either, it was like these absolutes. Either I'm going to be the same way or I'm going to have to be on the full other side of that polarity. And that hurt. And it, and it didn't just hurt me. You know, it hurt, it hurt people around me. You know, even those who tried, you know, when I did tell them what the deal was, try to support me. You know, and... At the end of the day, I think one of the challenges for for that second phase when I was really trying to to do it is, you know, I was building the house in the wrong order, you know, because really what I'm talking about is like self-love and I wasn't really giving myself that, you know, so self-love is the foundation of building a real, a really, truly powerful life um, that God, you know, intended. Like you got to like build that foundation first. And so I wasn't doing that. So when I was going through the motions of, you know, trying to uh, correct a thing, it wasn't underpinned with my self-care. You know, in reflection, you know, if I would have, like in that last experience I was talking about with my last partner, if I would have been able to let her know, like, yo, my body's sending me signals and I thought I, I was up for this today, but I'm really not, you know, but I didn't do that. So I don't know how she would have behaved. I don't know how she would have shown up. Um, it may have completely altered everything. I don't know. You know why I don't know? Because I didn't do it. You know, I don't, I don't live with regret, but you know, you, you do got to pay attention. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't just easily write everything off. You know, like you got to see, you got to see this stuff. You got to be willing to see all of it, man. You know, like, so it's just about, you know, seeing, you know, just about seeing and, and if you're if you're try, trying to recreate a different your reality for yourself, there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, just maybe some of the things I shared about, you know, paying attention to if you if it's starting to go poorly, you know, and using your voice and, you know, really speaking your truth on that and making sure that whatever you do is underpinned with self-care. So, um, you know, we all have a right to renegotiate the deal and change our mind anytime we want to. You know, that's our birthright, absolute freedom. And we have to practice that. We have to allow other people to practice that. You know, if somebody says they're going to do X, Y, Z, and then something comes up or they, they're just not feeling that vibe that day and they, they renegotiate that with you, that's beautiful, man. There's, I'd rather, I would prefer that than have somebody trying to do something just because they feel obligated. You feel me? I just That's not the right energy to build anything from. So if you are going to, you know, go to work to heal it, just make sure you don't lose yourself in the process because that's what I did. So that's what I felt like sharing with you today. Just, you know, my truth around, you know, my experience around holidays. And again, because I know that a lot, a lot of us um, carry trauma around it. It's not, it's not the brightest time of, of the, of the year for us. It's it can get really dark and we can feel really alone. And even, you know, when we know that's not true, uh, it doesn't mean we don't get sucked into that, you know, we ha it takes so much energy to get, it, to get ourselves out. So, you know, and then we, then when we start into a new year, you know, it's, it's, so it's almost like when you like, when you, you know, like you're getting ready to run a race and everyone's lined up, you know, and then they, they at the line and they hit the gun and like you stumble. A lot of us, like, at least for me, <laughs> A lot of the times I'd stumble into the new year because I'm coming off the heels of, you know, that period. So I don't, I don't, I don't come out of the block right, you know, or at least the way I want to when I say right, you know, because I'm only living by my own standard. Hopefully, you know, something I shared has helped in some small way. And if it has, great, fantastic. Um, you know, and as I always say in all my podcast episodes, it's like, you know, your responsibility is to hold the filter up. And, and, and do that in life, not just with this, you know, medium and this mechanism of a conversation that we're having, but in everything. Like, I just have a big filter up in life and I filter everything, you know, um, the best I can, you know, because nothing's an absolute. But the best I can, I, I do my best to filter. So filter this podcast, like filter what works for you and just leave the rest, man. It's just not for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I, I like try to live my life. You know, and it brings me a lot more peace. 
you know. So filter out what works. Uh, if everything works, fantastic. If nothing resonates, fantastic. Thank you for, you know, the time and energy either way to be listening to this podcast right now. And it means a lot to me. Thank you. And if you'd be willing, if you feel led, you know, please share it with someone else. And definitely, you know, um, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your voice. I'd love to hear what, you, what your thoughts are and how you feel about it. And maybe you're like me. Maybe this has always been a challenging time. Know that it's okay. And there's nothing wrong with you. And that you're gloriously and wonderfully made. Just like everybody else. You know, what I intend to do is practice on high levels of self-care. I'm only going to be around the people I want to be around this weekend. I'm only going to have the conversations that I want to have this weekend. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do as it relates to what I want to eat, how long I want to sleep. I want to spoil myself a little bit, you know, not work so hard. And that's my gift to me. And it's one of the ways I'm going to counteract some of the, you know, things that may swell up, you know, because I'm still a human being and they may. Thanks again for your time and attention. It means a lot. And I'm sending you nothing but love. Peace.